Well, my name is Jim Caseman, and this is session number 36 of Getting to Know God Intimately. Well, we've had a few side trips on the way, but uh, sometimes I believe, and at least in my experience, when Brother Higgin and others would go on a little side trip, there would be a revelation or a nugget that I would need to know to be able to understand the scriptures properly, and in our case, to be able to begin to understand, to get to God, in order to get to God, to get to know God intimately, uh, we need to understand his ways, his thoughts, and how he acts, so we can not be confused, but understand what's happening. Now, let's go back to Genesis 3 and see how long we can stay here again. <laughs> we left off the session before that, a couple of sessions back maybe, and uh, we'd already talked about how Adam and Eve had a free will, and they could choose whether they wanted to obey God or rebel against God, and of course we found out then in chapter 3, that they rebelled. And here's what happened. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the, fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So God told him, here in Genesis 2, 16 and 17, not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or you would die. But then here's how Satan comes in to begin to deceive. Then the serpent said to the woman, Ah, you're not, you, you're not surely die. You won't die. For God knows that the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, so, when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, now here's the physical senses. Good for food, for the physical body. And, and, and pleasant to the eyes. See, here's the five physical senses coming. And a tree desirable to make one wise. Wow, well, I can be like God if I eat this tree. She took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now here's where Adam blew it. He should have said, look, Eve, don't touch that fruit. God said not to do it. Don't listen to the devil. You, we will die if we eat it. He didn't, he didn't stand up like a man and correct his wife in this case. Matter of fact, it, it, it didn't even, I mean, when she offered the fruit to him, he just took it and ate it. There was no, well, maybe I shouldn't, no thought given. And immediately the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. So it's indicated pretty strongly here that Adam and Eve had an intimate relationship with God to where they would walk together in the cool of the morning in the garden, walking together in the presence of the Lord. But now they're hiding from God. Sin has separated them. And, 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 and God is a holy, sinless God. And sin and God, you, uh, you can't come into God's presence with sin. It's impossible. It, 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 it'd be immediately be destroyed. God is holy and sinless. And uh, so it's a, it's a terrible thing. Uh, people have uh, died under the Old Testament for entering the most holy place uh, without uh, entering the holy place with sin. And so then the Lord called Adam and said, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you that you should not eat? So God knew that he ate of the tree because his eyes were opened to what? Good and evil. And then the man said, the woman whom you gave to me to, who, to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Now, isn't that something? And now we've seen, this is 6,000 years ago and what has been going on for 6,000 years? It's always somebody else's fault, not yours. The woman, my boss, my partner at work, my wife, my woman you gave me, made me do it. And then there was a time when, uh, I don't know, when you hear people say the devil made me do it. See, everybody else but you. 
And the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. And I at least she was honest. She said, I was deceived. What did Adam say? The woman you gave me. Well, Adam was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. He ate of the fruit willingly. And so the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, verse 14, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. Her seed, singular, capital S, that's Jesus. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And Jesus would bruise the head of Satan, destroy his lordship, ultimately cast him into the lake of fire for eternity. And of course, you shall bruise his heel. Jesus' heel would be bruised, of course, that's speaking of the crucifixion. And then to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception and pain. You shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and, yeah, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. His physical body would return to dust. Well, it's really tragic what has happened here. All right, now, let's see if we can answer some questions. We have here, man was separated from God, and uh, he had the nature of sin. And, we're, and we understand that from, the, that from Adam, from the time Adam forward, like it says in uh, Romans chapter 5 and in verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man's sin, death entered the world, and, and death through sin, thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. One man, sin came into this world. Now, we're not being penalized. We're not being penalized for Adam's sin. God holds each and every one of us accountable for the sins that we do. But why is it then that we have the tendency to sin? Well, we take on the nature. We've taken on the nature of sin from our physical parents, Adam and Eve. Now, Adam and Eve, they are spirits and they live in physical bodies. And of course, as a human spirit, they both were deceived, and then they, then they granted the, 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 the lusts of the flesh the desire to eat it. <laughs> they were the ones that decided to feed this human body, but they're the ones that sinned. Now, when they sinned, they took on the, na they, they took on the nature of sin, the nature of Satan, and the nature of death, and they were separated from God. It started physically, spiritually first, and then, of course, when they died spiritually, then their physical bodies died. And so then, what very few people understand is, and then God told them, of course, to be fruitful and multiply, remember? And, 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 and um, to be fruitful and multiply. So God only created one set of, of spiritual beings, female and male. That's all he ever created. And he said to those two human spirits, be fruitful and multiply. See, God desired a spiritual family. See, physical bodies are only temporary. I mean, that's just a blink. A hundred years is just a blink compared to eternity. God's looking to have a family of human spirits, an eternal family family that will live for eternity that's God's goal and so then he's asked uh, uh, his plan was for human spirits to come together like in a, in a marriage with husband and wife when two human spirits come together 
and, and sexual intercourse, they're really creating two, a, hum, a new human spirit. Well, I started something there, and our time is out. So we'll, we'll pick it up in the next session right away. Meanwhile, be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do. Amen.